Guys, it is a glorious day here on the Glorious Sunrise Podcast. We just got done having an absolute <laughs> blast of a false <laughs> intro, which you will get to see at the end of this video if you stick around uh, or listen to on the, the podcast app. Guys, welcome back. This is episode number five of Glorious Sunrise, uh, the podcast hosted by myself. I'm Kevin from It Resolves, and we have got... John from Channel It Resolves. Yes! This is the first podcast after the announcement of uh, John officially joining the It Resolves family as our resident streamer. He is streaming four times a week minimum, uh, barring any surprise streams, stuff like that. But uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, 7 o'clock Central Time. Is that correct? Did I correct. get it right? 7 to 10 yes. or 7 to 9, excuse me. Yeah, seven yes. to nine. All seven right. to nine Central Time, barring any inclement weather, because the Midwest likes to do that. But if we do end up missing any time, we'll definitely add in some time on another night that's scheduled, or we'll do a weekend surprise stream to make up the time. You guys will get at least what's the math? Eight hours of yeah. streaming during the week. Love it. Um, so we really do appreciate John being a part of this, guys. This is a great opportunity for the channel, a uh, great community piece to the channel. And so I do want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has been hanging out with John on stream uh, throughout the last week. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, and I know you've had a great time with it, too. So uh, thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate it. We are looking into some potential new options for streams in terms of new interactive pieces and stuff like that. Uh, we're hoping that by the time this episode goes out, we will have something else launched. But I don't want to I don't want to throw too much pressure on us. So we'll leave that one out for now. Uh, but if it is and you catch the stream tonight, John will obviously be talking about it. So you can check that out then. Uh, but all that to say. We're talking net decking today. Uh, this is a topic that yeah. you brought up and, and wanted to talk about. So I'll let you do the intro uh, as to why you decided to do this. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, net decking, it's kind of just become a dirty word in the magic community. And I don't uh, necessarily agree with it being a bad thing. But uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to cover it. Is it bad? Is it good? Are there reasons for it? I mean, is there any such thing as not net decking anymore with the internet as wide and as expansive as it is? So uh, yeah, I just figured we'd dive into this and just kind of hash it out a little bit. Yeah, and uh, you know, I agree with you. This is one of those terms that's been around forever. I mean, as far as I've been into like keeping up with competitive magic and actually playing a little bit of ranked and those kinds of things, um, this goes the term net decking goes back years and years before now. However, it's become such a, uh, I will say, a pivotal topic of conversation, especially with the upcome uh, or, or the upcoming of Arena over the last couple of years. It's become a lot more prevalent. Um, and to your point, you know, is it good? Is it bad? I think that that question has to be asked in so many different vacuums that we'll kind of talk about throughout mm -hmm. this episode, because is it good or bad for the game? Is it good or bad for the players? Is it good or bad for casual players, competitive player? You know, there's so many variables to this that I think we we will probably touch on throughout this discussion. Um, but we had no prior like discussion between you and I on our own opinions on this. Um, so I think what we'll do is start off, and you kind of alluded to your thoughts here a little bit already, but I think we'll start off just by saying, like, blanket statement. Where do you land on net decking? Blanket statement. Um, yeah, man, we can get spicy with this. We don't yeah. talk about it beforehand. We want to keep it real on the podcast. Yeah. Um, I would say net decking. I'm fine with it. I okay. mean, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go ranked and you're gonna go competitive, you absolutely have to probably kind of do some type of net decking. You're gonna have to take the percentages into mind. I mean, that's just the mathematical part of it uh, for the win percentages, and then of course uh, what the strengths are going into the tournament against the other decks that are floating to the top. Um, we've mentioned before, though. There's there's always outside net decking, like people like Reed Duke. He's yeah. going to bring something into a tournament that you've never seen before. <laughs> and it's it's either going to do really great or middle of the pack. I don't think I've ever seen him do horrible, man. No, nah, he's just um, too good. <laughs> yeah, he's a wizard, man. He is a straight, absolute wizard. But, uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with net decking, man. If that's your thing, if uh, meta and the rank and, um, you know, competitive nature side of it is your thing. I mean, that's the avenues of uh, magic. There's a million of them. Yeah. You don't have to do any one certain thing. My niche is, you know, 
the online streaming and jank decks and combos yeah. that are not likely to be pulled off, but I just want the good laugh out of it. But yeah, uh, sure. yeah. my overall blanket statement, don't have a problem with it. You do you. So I'm inclined to agree uh, for the most part. Um, I, I think net decking is actually an important piece depending on your... Um, perspective and so i know i like i've personally seen a lot of people say they really hate net decking like it ruins the game because there's no variance anymore and all this stuff and you can mm. certainly get why that argument makes sense i mean just looking at the standard environment right now naya runes like the enchantments deck is kind of sitting towards the top of the meta and so i know personally if i'm on the ranked ladder a lot of people have just pulled the same naya runes deck and they're playing it on the ladder and hoping for the best and so it's one of those things where, yes, I understand where that argument is that, you know, net decking leads to a stale format. It leads to uh, an unexciting format. It leads to less creativity and all that stuff. However, I would argue that's a bit of a, like, naive approach. Uh, even for the people who are net decking and, like, just pulling a list and going on the ranked ladder. Because the reality of it is, if you pull any list, I don't care what it is and you just jump on the ranked ladder with it, there is a learning curve, my friend, and you have yeah. not met that learning curve. There are going to be nuances yeah. of the deck that you haven't thought of because you didn't build the deck or you haven't playtested the deck or you haven't done this or that. And so when you find yourself realizing that those are the, the instances that are going to happen more often because you've just net decked uh, 100%, you find yourself wanting to change things which inherently dispels the fact that there's no creativity in net decking because you're going to get to the point where you feel you have to make a change because you find yourself up against a million different, I don't know, vanishing verses, and they're always killing your Runeforge champion, and you've got no way to deal with it. And so you try something, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but that's the exploratory process of creative deck building. And yes, it started with a net deck, but it generally doesn't end with a net deck. If your experience in Magic is completely dependent on the fact that you you took a deck online uh, or from online and played it and didn't like it and so you quit the game, maybe Magic wasn't for you in the first place. And that is okay. That's perfectly fine. But there's a creative outlet even after pulling a deck list from online. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. It, it's uh look you gotta know how to pilot the thing yeah. um it's a fact and look i'm the worst person to even be talking about that <laughs> part, portion man if you've ever caught the live streams i think uh, i was waiting for targets to be selected last night to, during historic to cycle yeah. one of my cards i didn't know that they could just target it and toss it in the bin i thought i got a chance to uh actually <laughs> cycle the card no that's not the case um no yeah you can look anybody can hit that but you you got to put in the time and the effort with I mean if that's what you're gonna do yeah you got to pair up with that and put in the time and the effort to know the different nuances of that deck and what you're looking for and what you need and what answers are coming up and how would you utilize this in the equation to uh, you know better your chances in in winning yeah and um, that's not always the case man I can usually it's funny because I can usually tell sometimes like. Uh, if somebody's net decking um there there's times you get like you were saying uh you can tell like when somebody pops a linvala to give all their creatures hex proof when you cast a farewell yeah bro don't it don't work like that no <laughs> don't work it like does that. Not work that way so, so it's you can kind of tell that they're just kind of trying it so yeah. then you don't feel so bad okay man i just ran into this large yeah. mono white pile of meta and i was super mad to begin with and or you know that was an esper flyers package yeah, yeah. and i was like super mad to begin with and then i was like oh they're trying something they're they're yeah. they're trying to they're trying to learn this deck so i don't feel so bad about it um yeah if you don't know the ins and outs of the game and even i'm horrible with it from time to time because i'll play real loose but uh yeah. You can net deck whatever you want. Trust me, you can lose 100% of the games yeah, exactly. if you don't learn that deck. So, yeah, I got no problems with it, man. Well, and I'm a strong, like, I mean, the as far as the It Resolves channel, like, on the recorded video end goes, mm -hmm. now, I do build my own decks occasionally, and I like to throw those in and have some fun with yeah. it. Um, 
but a lot of the time I go and I do one of two things. One, I'll either pull a list one for one. Now, when I do mm -hmm. that, especially on video, I do try and credit whoever I've, you know, taken it from. If it's Covert Go Blue, MTG Arena Originals, like MTG Malone, whoever it might be, Sonia. Um, yeah. I try and, and I did this actually, this is how you and I got started talking was I mm -hmm. played one of your decks. And I try and credit the person who I know created the deck because one, they worked hard to create it. That's not for me to take credit for. But B, right. I also play a new deck every single day here on the channel. And so from a just basic time constraint, uh, it doesn't make sense for me to create a deck every single day because I just don't have the time and the, the energy to put into true deck building as it should be done. So what I do is a lot of times I look at it from the testing aspect of, okay, here's this idea that somebody else had, and it's a really fun idea. Let's see what our thoughts are on this deck. And how would we tool it out after those, those games to say, okay, well, maybe this would help here. Maybe it's fine as is. Maybe you don't have to touch it. Um, but I like coming at it from that perspective because that is a really great example of how you take net decking and turn it into that creative deck building, taking that next step and saying, okay, well, maybe this deck isn't perfect. Maybe we do need to tool it out a little bit or whatever. And as a prime example of this, not related to it resolves, um, I was watching Reed Duke just the other day, uh, who released a Jund video. Surprise, he released a Jund, modern Jund. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought Reed Duke playing modern Jund? Right. Um, but he was playing a new version of modern Jund that he saw from somebody else and before he sat down, now this is a little bit of a different process, but before he sat down to play that deck, he swapped out, I think it was like three cards. He was like, I just want to try these three instead of the ones that he has in there. And that's it. It's the same deck other than those three cards. But yeah. that's the thought process that should happen every time you take a deck from online to say, okay, well, let's, let's just see. Let's make sure that this is the way I want to do it and all that <laughs> stuff. And I think people skip out on that and think of net decking as truly just I pull a list one, one, one for one and that's all I'm going to do. Yeah, no, I agree, man. And look, that's one of the things when we finally did run into the, to each other and I started checking out the channel and stuff. And uh, um, so one of the things I loved about it, man, I was like, so smart. This dude is not melting his brain every second of the day <laughs> trying to come up with something new. It's so smart. Um, one, you give credit. And, a, a, you know, be it a bigger channel or a smaller channel, you're, you know, yeah. you're telling people, go check them out. They might pile it a little bit differently than I did. They may have actually spent more time with it. But mm -hmm. this is what I think of it. And you give an actual real perspective. You play three to two games or maybe four, and you see all the wins and losses. And, the, I mean – there's no criticism. It's just raw, guys. Yeah. He doesn't cut it out. And I mean, look, in the content creator world of magic, almost every content creator will tell you, open with a win, close with a win. Yeah. That's how you keep your viewers and that's how you gain subscribers. You're not going to get it here, man. No. I mean, you might if he goes undefeated. I mean, undefeated. hopefully I go undefeated and then it's not a problem. I just said, you're not going to get it here, bro. <laughs> hey, no, fuck um, you, man. <laughs> I know, but yeah. But yeah, man, it's, uh, but that's what I tell people about the channel. I'm like, he's going to show you what happens yeah. real. No, he's there are plenty of edit. times where I lose three, four straight games, as you yeah. talked about, and you did I it will on one release of my them. decks. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, it was, in so. fact, the deck you thought was going to be amazing. I um, did. I did. I thought it was. I was totally wrong. That's fine. No, it's all we good. We can keep but bringing no, that I, one up. <laughs> yeah, that's joke of the podcast. Uh, right. My thing is, though, like, you know, so many people care way too much about the wins of Magic. And I think, mm -hmm. and I get it. Let me be clear in saying, if you're trying to be a competitive Magic player, you should absolutely care about the wins. That's stupid for you not to. But if you're just here to have a fun time and play some Magic, which is what I try to do, and that's what the It Resolves channels, not like we don't have a mission vision statement by any means, but, you know, that's kind of the goal of the channel is to have fun around Magic, learn a few things along the, along the way, but we're just here to enjoy the game and have some fun and be a positive community. And so I think um, that honest transfer of what actually happens is part of that because mm -hmm. I'm not sitting here trying to prove that I'm the best player in the world. Clearly I'm not. I'm stuck in platinum purgatory as most people are, and that's fine. 
but I do enjoy having fun and learning new decks, and that's where you know the the whole model came from of let me play a new deck every day and let me have some fun with it. Um, and even jumping into other formats. I mean, we we talk about standards so often, um, and mm -hmm. certainly that's the focus. But um, you know, to your point, you do a lot on live stream that's not related just to standard. I've started doing flex days where I've jumped into popper and modern and some other different stuff, and they get less views, but it's fun for me, and I don't really care. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, you know. No, yeah, man, keep it viable to you. Um, and like you said on the on the live streams, look, we we wear normally standard. Uh, we do the direct challenges on live streams just because you know, people say standard still, and that yeah. kind of goes right into this. People say standard still. I don't like going on the ladder. It's still okay. So do some direct challenges. Take it off the non ranked ladder. Yeah. We do it on live stream, and we were normally doing standard. But we got new people coming in. The I mean, the It Resolves channel was bigger than the Country Fried channel. And uh, we got new people starting to funnel in from the It Resolves channel. And they're like, hey, would you mind if we play Historic? Well, yeah. no, I don't. I don't mind. We're yeah. here to have fun. We're here to do what I, I'm here to sit down with you guys and just play some magic, man. Because yep. that's what I miss. Um, but... Uh, that's why we do it it's yeah. the closest thing you can get to tabletop um as far as the competitive side and the net decking and stuff yeah man it is real the only thing that i forewarn i mean anybody can go into a tournament and have just that spot on you know laser focus for the entire weekend and and nail it and good for you but more often than not you're going to see some really familiar names at the top 10. And yeah. if you really want to do that and really want to take it competitive, you better think about it because they eat and sleep magic. And they play some of these decks, you know, 200, 300 matches, or they try to at least get 100 to 200 matches a day. Yeah. So they know every scenario that that deck's going to fall into uh, going into those tournaments, man. They they take it for real, for real. And that's that's respectable. It's amazing what they can do with the, the uh list that they settle on but uh yeah i'm down i'm down with uh yeah. what you said uh the game to me is learning to pilot different mechanics and different interactions and wanting to see stuff that we normally don't see of course good cards are going to be good cards and they're yeah, going to make it in the deck list but you know i want to i want to see that magic bro show me some magic yeah. i haven't seen yet well, <laughs> so you know, that's what i'm point, trying to do like because uh, I think it's really easy to say, okay, well, these pro level players have put all this time and effort into the deck. And, you know, we're reiterating the point that if you just go and take that deck and expect to do well with it, that you're going to probably have a bad experience. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people that take the net decking is terrible argument have probably had that experience. Um, or they're on the reverse side and really do feel like the creativity is you know draining away because you can just steal the greatest deck online and all that stuff but there's something to keep in mind here which is like a really a huge step against net decking uh being a problem which is the simple fact that and and pro players examine or, or, or exhibit this all the time there is no perfect deck there will never be a perfect deck now there are decks mm -mm. that get very close because they can win on turn zero <laughs> But it's not ever, statistically speaking, going to happen 100% of the time. And therefore, you always have, a, have an opportunity or the opponent always has an opportunity to beat you, no matter what deck you're playing. And I mean, you can literally take like a standard level deck and play against like a vintage level deck. And I'm not saying it'll happen very often, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the standard deck, there is a non-zero chance that that deck can win even against a vintage deck. It just has to really be in that favor. <laughs> but my point mm -hmm. is... Um, everybody's experience is different. Everybody's piloting of a deck is different. You net deck what you feel is the best deck in the format, and that's perfectly fine. You will find things that you might want to change if you go through the process. Now, if you go through a few games and you decide you don't like it, that's fine too, but you're probably going to have a different viewpoint than someone who put the time in to say, okay, well, maybe this one card, maybe it's one card, that one card could mean the difference between you winning or losing the next game. And that mentality is what makes a pro player a, pl a pro player. Because they're sitting there researching every little detail about this deck saying, okay, well, here's my available options. Is this option better than this option because of flexibility or maybe because it's efficient or, you know, XYZ, there's a million reasons why. 
And so pro players don't think about, I'm assuming now, again, I'm not a pro player, but I don't think pro players think of net decking quote unquote as like, I have to use this deck hundred percent for what it is. I think they think of net decking as here, let me take this template and then change it. And that inherently yeah. I think is why, where the definition of net decking gets very crossed. Because I think a lot of just casual players feel it's just 100% you pull the list and that's it. And I don't think that's what net decking really is. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, look, yeah, they'll play it, man. They're tacticians. They're escape artists. Uh, yeah. They want every scenario. They want to know all the probabilities and stuff. There's, there's a reason why they're pro players. But look, I mean, just for instance, uh, going off of untapped right now, the top tier one deck in standard best of one is boros burn yep. and it's got like a 60.8 percent win rate do you know how many people play arena <laughs> this has only got thirty-one thousand matches yeah that it's recorded for it doesn't mean it's the best deck it no. means it's the one that has been played the most with that win rate to have the highest probability of winning and has given it tier one. Yeah. I mean, mono white aggro is not even in second place. Nia humans is, <laughs> uh, but but mono white aggro. Well, but Nia humans has only played forty eight thousand matches. Mono white is setting at almost uh, fifty eight point five percent. It's fifty eight point four right now. Yeah, and has almost ninety two thousand matches. So <laughs> it's got double, almost triple. Yeah, the play time is the other two, but the other two set there at the higher percentage. Yeah. Um, look, man, yeah, it becomes percentages and stuff, and it becomes, and that's what you run into with net decking and stuff. I, I like to look around just to see what people are playing in tournaments and stuff, because that's usually like in the in the store tournaments, um, and there's websites that do that, like uh, top eight. Yeah. And because uh, you get to see some really good creativity out of it. And that's what I like. I like seeing the creativity of what what floated to the top in these yep. bigger pools that we're not seeing. Untap can give you percentages of what you can take into arena on the ladder and probably have a really good percentage with once you learn how to pilot it. Yeah. But uh, it's not going to show you the footprint of what's going on. No. Out, out out in the uh, actual stores and stuff and uh, i i don't even i don't get to go to stores much more often anymore and, and that's kind of what i'm missing from it I, I used to love that because you get to see some of the crazy stuff people come up with yeah and for uh, sure. yeah just because you're seeing it float to the top all across the the net doesn't mean that there is a deck out there that hasn't been put together that could do or perform better against all of this stuff yeah um it's never going to be a hundred percent win rate no, never. Well, never. and you know, you mentioned MTG top eight as an example. Um, it's I, I find this fascinating because a lot of times I'll build I'll build decks just for in real life just for fun, and a lot of those are more modern focused decks because that's my format of choice. I really enjoy modern. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And mm -hmm. uh, Caitlin, my wife and I will sit down and play in the evening a good bit, and so um, she wanted like a Soul Sisters deck. Uh, because she really likes life gain, as most new players do. Um, no surprise there. And so I was like, cool, let me go look up a couple of Soul Sisters lists. Well, I mean, you click Soul Sisters on MTG Top 8, or you click Heliod Life Gain, or whatever you know generic term they're using for that shell. And the thing is, the shell of that deck, yeah, is probably going to be mostly the same. But there are so many, again, this is at the pro level, at the tournament level, so many different variations of the exact same mm -hmm. deck to a point where they don't even always look like the same deck. Like I've I've seen mono white Heliod life gain decks. I've seen Selesnia versions so they can play Collected Company. But the the idea behind it is that you take the shell and be creative with the rest and be flexible with the rest. And so you'll hear me talk about all the time, um, you know, and and Naya Runes is a great example of a deck with not very many flex slots because right. it has to run so many of the engine pieces. And so those are slots that you know are going to be taken up in the deck list. Like you're going to have the Runeforge champion. You just kind of have to. Um, however, some flex slot examples in that list might be, okay, well, which runes do you run? Do you try and run any of the techie runes that don't necessarily fit with the deck? And I actually saw one person run a blue rune without any blue mana, but the idea was very simple. It gave flying. And so you could get in for the attack and be evasive. And it's like, 
Okay, that's cool. That's creative. That was one card. They had one version in their deck of that. But you know mm -hmm. what? That was sick. That was really cool. And that's inspiring. <laughs> yeah. Because that'll, like, yeah, I get really tired of Naya runes. But when you see that one different card all of a sudden, it's like, okay, this person didn't net deck. Or maybe they started with a net deck, but then they, they put their own flair on it. And that's truly, I think, just the mentality that you have to have if you are going to go through that process. That's fine. But be creative after the fact. Yeah, no, I agree. But look, I net deck. Um, yeah, all the time. Not, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, it's not, I mean, look, I, I will make some crazy decks. I will. But especially since the live streams with people coming in want, hey, we, are you willing to play historic? Are you willing to try explore? And uh, these are things that I never dove into other than what we did on it. It is what it is. So yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, well, let me start copying some stuff over and pasting it just so, so we can get in a game. Uh, doesn't mean that's what I'm going to stick with. And uh, it's called Heliod's Life Game. That oh. may be set, <laughs> set in my <laughs> arena <laughs> deck list. But, uh, but I, try and get, I try and get a balance of, of jank deck list and, and meta, you know, hardcore. So they can tell me whether they want to play a hard game and just compete. Yeah. Or do they want to just play something loose and see if we can get one of ours to pop off yeah which is a lot of fun about it but um yeah man um i don't have a problem with net decking the one thing that you did say i know and i, I know it's just a passing statement we all hated go, going up against naya ruins um but do we do we really hate going up against naya ruins i mean do we really hate going up against mono white uh yeah, probably the going up against it part. But do we really hate those decks? No. Or maybe not at all. maybe we're just upset because you know, we're not just going to make the determination that hey, we want to win all the time. I yeah. mean, we do have we want to see the flavors of magic. Yeah. Or we would be playing the meta games. Um and look, uh mono white's aggravating. <laughs> it's so <laughs> aggravating too. It tilts me like no other. Yeah. I can't, I can't stand it when they hit Thalia turn 2 and Redain turn 3 <laughs> and Spellbinder turn 4 and I mean, I used to like PVDDR. Yeah. I don't now. No. <laughs> Anytime I see him, I'm just like, uh, oh, dude, really get out of my game. <laughs> but um but no, I mean and Naya ruins. I hate going up against it, but I got to tell you, man, it's still it's it's just hilarious to pilot. It's a good because when it when it just pops off, it's the dumbest stuff yeah. I've ever seen in my Absolutely. life. Man. I mean, it's a good deck, and it's played for a reason. But this is yeah. the and this is kind of the reverse argument for net decking is that because people have net decked so much and a mm. lot of people are playing and i'm i'm using the example of naya runes because it seems to hit home for a lot of people i've seen it a lot yeah, in the comments yeah. but you know you play up against it a good bit well you play up against it enough and you're going to do one of two things you're going to join the bandwagon and start playing it yourself or potentially more likely you're going to find a deck that beats the crap out of naya runes mm -hmm. and that's how the meta evolves. That's how you get out of net decking is too much net decking. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it kind of yeah. works out in, in favor long term because, yeah, it does kind of stale up the format a little bit where you're going to end up saying, OK, there's a lot of Naya runes decks and then there's a lot of decks that try and beat Naya runes. Well, that's fine. But the way that they beat Naya runes is probably going to be vastly different. And then all those people playing Naya runes are going to get their butt handed to them a million times and they're going to get tired of the deck. And so you're going to lose that as part of the format, at least to some capacity. It will never be zero, of course. But the idea being that that's meta shifting. That's how you get to the next step in the meta. And we see that in action all the time. You know, we're seeing that right now. We're a couple weeks into Streets of New Capenna at this point. A lot of the aggro decks, like the Naya Runes deck, has really done well. But we're starting to see a lot more of the control decks start to take over. Because now, okay, well, we know what the aggro environment looks like. Now we know how to beat it. And so you're seeing that. I mean, that's literally happening now, happening now. And it's like, all right, sick. Well, that's fine. Because that's just the progression of the meta. It's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just things need to shift. And um, I don't know. I find, I know people get really bored of stale formats. I'm one of them, 100%. But if a good deck is there, which there always is a good deck, or there's always a fun deck. Mm -hmm. Like, who cares? Just go have fun. Like, 
do whatever you want to do. It's fine. Yeah, man. Come join the stream. Yes. We don't play net decks shameless unless you plug. want to. Come hang unless out. you want to. Absolutely shameless plug, man. That's what we're trying to do is just kind of take it back to a live format with yeah. a tabletop kind of feel to it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, there's non-ranked. You don't have to come to the stream. There's non-ranked. Are you going to run into meta decks? Hell yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> like 90% of the time you are yeah. because it's people that are net decking that are pulling it and they're trying to learn how to pilot it before yeah. they take it on the ladder. Man, that's what non-ranks for. You may not, you may, I may not like it being utilized that way. You may not like it being utilized that way, but that is what it's for. You go yep. to non-ranked and test it out and then bring it over to ranked. Yep. I wish they had just a tab that said jank. <laughs> 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 and you weren't allowed to have Luminarch, <laughs> Aspirant, or a Ruin or stuff. But uh, no, nah, that's, that's, you know, there's other avenues to approach yep. uh, or ways to approach that and, um, and get around it. And that's what we've a shameless plug again done yeah. on a stream but uh <laughs> yeah man no um i think you were spot on with the meta taking shape um if you if you've been in the community long enough if you've seen the the rotations and the new sets long enough look go crazy with your aggro in the first two to three weeks mm -hmm. two to three weeks man control is going to be horrible for two to three weeks because <laughs> yeah. control doesn't know what to focus on but after that two to three weeks, your time's over. Yeah. Esper's coming back, baby. <laughs> Esper's you coming just back. Love Esper. Yeah, man. We got Voidrin. We got the Vanishing Verses. We got Faithful Absences. We got Farewells, Doom Scars, Blood yeah, on the Snows. We got all the best planeswalkers. <laughs> Nobody envies Esper more than every other color <laughs> combination. <laughs> Esper's the envy of it. No, yeah. man. But it's the truth. Um, control, like, my crew wanted me to play an Esper deck list the first week. What's your new upgrade? Well, man, I'll try and put something together for you, but do you know how impossible it is yeah, it's hard to, to plan for anything right now? I've, dude, I played like 20 games. I got two wins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I told them Esper's dead right now, man. Yeah. Esper's dead right now, uh, especially in a hard control format. Uh, Esper Flyers looks to be pretty good, the yeah. aggro version. But, uh, yeah, you got to let the meta smooth out a little bit. Uh, sure. Net decking-wise, though, look, I don't – I think in the bigger picture of things, I think Magic has taken an evolution. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on this because okay. we had COVID – and we had Arena. Look, Magic Online's been there forever, but not a lot of people were utilizing it. We still had the stores. But then we got the lockdowns, and then Wizards was like, oh, let's go into it. Let's do Arena. Mm -hmm. And it became more accessible. And look, it's pretty. It's got the, you know, it's got the animations and the cinematographies and the music and all that kind of stuff. Um, net decking is only going to get more prevalent Instead yeah. of having, you know, I don't even know what the MTG online community is. 100,000, 200,000 people, if that, compared to what you arena. More than that. You think so? I think so. Only for the, and we're getting a little off topic here, but only because online versus arena, there's a lot more formats on online. Mm -hmm. Um, okay and a lot of people still love doing like the cube drafts there and that kind of stuff because you get the old school cards so i know a lot of the like i personally play there because modern isn't available on arena okay, i hate the way yeah. it looks but you know it's still a a more vast uh card pool right but it's not it's still on topic i mean that's i mean that's valid to to justify i mean so it does have a community looking mm. for other formats that aren't available in arena but guys look we we, we got the covid lockdown yeah. um our stores were shut down and now arena's online and look there's places arena can reach that didn't even have stores before yeah. so now you got more eyes on it so people are you have more people trying to figure out what the best deck is and that's going to lead to heavy heavy net decking and a really strong meta so i think i think magic has evolved into a stronger meta state yeah. than it was with the storefronts me personally i think it has the meta has gotten stronger you're going to see the the strongest top three decks float to the top all the time because 
everybody, even people who didn't have stores to go play it, can reach this game almost now. Yeah. And uh, you got that many eyes on, you got that many brains working to unlock the puzzles. And I, I mean, I think it's unfortunately if meta is not your thing, you either evolve with it and you put up with it, or you go to non ranked or you find streams that you can do that kind of stuff with, and uh, or you go back to the stores, man. Yeah. The stores are always crazy, man. and I would advise you if you've never been to store magic and the arena is your only experience, go make some friends at the stores too, man. Yeah. It's a great experience, especially. I, well, I can't say it's always going to be a great experience, but if you get Hopefully. a good store, there is nothing like it, man. Nothing like it. Well, and you know, to your point, I think what we're learning is there's a lot of different magic players, and they're going to take things like net decking in very different capacities and. What I mean by that is, you know, as Arena has expanded the the global audience of who has access to Magic, um, we are seeing a lot of influx of new players. And, you know, that's happened over the last few years. This isn't new information. This has been since, you know, Magic Online and Arena, but especially Arena has been the big, you know, catalyst for a lot of that. Um, which is, let me say, first and foremost, a great thing. The more people <laughs> playing Magic, like... Heck yeah, let's go. Like, let's hang out. Let's play some magic. Let's have a good time. Like, that's great. But I think, and this goes for, I, I would say even like old school players could learn or benefit from this. But I think an important piece to this is sitting down and understanding what capacity you want to enjoy magic in. Um, and what I mean by that is if you're going to get frustrated by people net decking on the ranked ladder, maybe the ranked ladder just isn't for you. Because the reality is, People are net decking on the ranked ladder to win the ranked ladder. <laughs> and that's just how you do that. And yeah, you'll tweak, like be creative. You still get to do that. But if you're getting frustrated by it, then it, to your point, like you were mentioning earlier, John, like there's avenues for you to still enjoy the game, but just in a different way. Like go hang out on non-ranked and try something different. Go to a store now that some stores are back open, thankfully. Um, go to the local game store and go hang out with some new people and learn some new decks and have some fun that way. Maybe even, and this was how I really got into Magic, have that one really good friend who will come over anytime and just hang out and play yeah. Magic with you. Because I'm I was telling you, say that, man. dude, I had the most fun. So people, longtime viewers of It Resolves, uh, for those of you who know Will, who was the co-creator of It Resolves um, early, early on. We did the It Resolves podcast and we started doing other stuff. Um, still is my best friend. Just a really great dude. Love that guy. Uh, we don't get to hang out as often anymore, but we used to live in the same apartment complex. And we would net deck all the time, man. We'd go on and be like Simic Delver mm -hmm. or uh, Is It Delver? <laughs> yeah. Stealing yeah. that list. But we'd create it in paper and then we'd sit down each with a net decked you know, tooled out little deck that we didn't create. We'd sit down and we would go through just play by play what we're doing. And we wouldn't show each other our hands or anything like that. But if we were like really in the tank on something, we'd talk it out. And you know how much you learn from doing that? Like we would sit down and be like, yeah. okay, well, I've got lightning bolt, but I also have, I don't know, a braid as an example. Benefit on like my mana. I can use all my mana into the braid, but... Uh, it's a little bit more of a flexible card because it also hits artifacts, so maybe I want to use the Lightning Bolt and just waste a mana for the turn despite not being able to use it for anything else. Like, we would talk through all those little nuances, and that's how we adapted our deck list. That's how we learned, oh, okay, well, a Braid really didn't help because this other deck really didn't have much in the way of artifacts, so let's go more efficient, let's go Lightning Bolts. And so, you know, like, we would learn so much out of that process, and that started with a net deck. But you just have a blast with it because you're learning with a friend. You're having a really good time. There's no pressure on it. And so you can sit down and enjoy the game in that capacity, regardless of whether you net decked or not. You can build from the ground up still, and it's fine. So I would just suggest that everybody, as you're playing the game, uh, and if you, especially if you get frustrated with the game, I'm not saying you should just give up on whatever you're doing. That I don't agree with. However... I would say if you're finding yourself consistently getting frustrated with ranked or whatever it might be, maybe just take a step back and say like, okay, is this really the right thing for me? Is this the right format for me? Because I promise you magic has a format for you. If you like magic in any capacity, magic has a format for you. Maybe you're just not in the right one and that is okay. But take the time to think about that. 
Yeah, man, I agree with it wholeheartedly. Um, yeah, man. So I was telling, I was telling everybody last night while we were playing. Um, we used to have uh, a four-man, six-man commander group, which doesn't really play the net decking, but does go to what you're talking about. Find yeah. your format. Uh, we'd have we had the four or five regulars, and then we'd have you know a six person come in, and it was Saturday at my place at noon when it would start, and it was potluck. Yeah, and we would play till two or three o'clock in the morning. Hell yes! And there was nothing like you know. It, by the end of the night, it may be back down to the regular four people. Sure, but there is nothing like spending a whole Saturday just, yeah. I mean, absolutely just busting each other's chops and yeah. pulling off the dumbest stuff and magic and just yeah. eating food and drinking and hanging out and talking and getting ideas and man it was such a great time such yeah. a great time too i love it yeah you just got to find out what works for you but net decking uh yeah i don't mind it man i don't mind it more no. often than not when i watch people on video i mean sometimes i'll watch somebody's videos because they came up with a creative idea that I want to take a look at. But more often than not, man, me personally, when I watch videos, um, I'm usually watching because I like a particular either build style or piloting style. Yes. And that's because, and the, what I mean, the build style is just because I like the creativity of it. The piloting style is because usually somebody catches my eyes where I know, which is probably 99% of the field can play better than me. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I feel you on that. <laughs> but, but I'm looking at how they're arranging stacks and how they're, and I'm trying to calculate what their next move is before they pull it off when I'm yeah. watching the video. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't so much mind that decking. I think if you're going to go the competitive side, if you, if mythic is your, is your goal and, and, maxing that out and trying to get into the tournaments and stuff like that and that's where you want to keep going stay focused and grind it out because yeah. it's it's a percentage game and look mythic isn't hard to make other than the fact of putting the in the hours to grind and keeping above a 50 percent win rate yep i but, mean that's uh, basically it um yeah but no i'm in agreement i think uh net decking as a whole i wouldn't argue is a great thing but i i don't think it's a bad thing um mm -hmm. i i feel fairly um unmoved by net decking as a whole i i don't have a strong like yes or no opinion i have a strong it's not bad opinion but other than that it, it is what it is and people are gonna do it like this is the age of information it's so easy and man people want to be easy so like just let people yeah. be easy man because the reality is they are going to go on the ladder with the exact same deck that they've been running because they net decked one time and they're probably going to lose like a lot until they figure the deck out. And once they do, then they're just a good player with the deck. So who cares? Like good for them. They put in the time. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with net decking. It's not my style. Um, I like to have fun. I like to do the dumb stuff, but, yeah. uh, you know, like uh, the Concede Machine, the Esper Control, man, you won't see many people play that. And its heyday was probably, um, I would say, what came right before Neon Dynasty, was it Crimson Val? I think it was, was Crimson it? Val. Yeah, it must have been. Man, we've got it? so many sets, it feels right? like. Um, back yeah, because Midnight so. Hunt came out before Crimson Val, so I think I think uh, the Conceit Machine, and that was an Esper deck list heavy yeah. control that I had built on my own, and uh, I think it was Crimson Val was it's just it was a tay day, man. I didn't care what you were running. We're yeah. going on the ladder, and I'm just going to absolutely obliterate you. It, the game may take an hour, yeah, but um, what I am trying to get to is I didn't net deck it, yeah, and that deck and I to each other if that makes <laughs> sense <laughs> if it makes sense i knew the ins and outs of everything of that deck and what i needed to do to progress the game forward to win find what speaks to you or yeah. learn it until it does i yeah. know that sounds crazy but once you get comfortable with one and it speaks to you you're just going to love it, it even That's more awesome. man yeah well and one thing i'll say too and this will be my kind of final note on net decking is that um even when you do create your own deck list, like chances are somebody out there has probably not built the exact same deck, but built something very similar and shared it online. 
So you're kind of just accidentally net decking anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah. it just doesn't matter. Like the idea is that, and I think this is kind of high level talking about magic at this point, but um, as a whole, magic is so good because, you know, as to your point, <clears throat> you feel a strong connection with that deck partially because you made it, but it also just fits your personality, your play style. Like things have to line up for you to really enjoy what you're doing when it comes to playing a particular deck. I know personally, I hate playing mono white. It is not my kind of deck. It's like here, play creature after creature and attack in and all that stuff. Man, I hate that crap. If I can doomsday for <laughs> yeah. a win and like yeah. not even interact with the opponent, but goldfish my way to it with some stupid combo, I'm super into that. Like, give me that deck. Yeah. Yeah, um, but like all that to say, you know, with it resolves, obviously we do try a lot of different decks and there are deck I net deck all the time, but like, I'm not going to play that deck again because I hate the play style of the deck. Now, what I'll say at the end of the video is if you enjoy aggro lists, this is great for you because this does exactly what you want it to do. Because I'm I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about other people watching the video. Like if they might enjoy it, this is why they might, this is why they might not. Personally, a lot of the decks I play, I don't really like that much because they don't fall into my play style, but it's fun right. to try. It's absolutely a blast to try regardless of whether or not I like the deck off the face of it. And a lot of times you find something within every little deck that you you can enjoy, but um, there's so much to it. And you can net deck and you can find a deck that wins 60% of the time, which is incredibly high. If you were to win 60% of the time, but you didn't enjoy it, would you still keep playing that deck? <laughs> no. <laughs> because Not if it's aggro. No. I just and that's my thing yeah. is like, Pro players might have a different perspective on that mm -hmm. because they're looking at something completely different than somebody just enjoying the game. But like, if you're just here to enjoy the game and you net deck and you don't enjoy it, just find another deck. Like, who cares? It just doesn't yeah. matter. Um. So I don't know. Basically, net decking is a dumb argument. We. This is a complete waste of a podcast really? episode. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not, <laughs> man. I just think I think people take it too seriously is what I think. Yeah. Um, it uh, it's got its place, man. Yeah. I, I'm not an aggro player. I'm not. I'm not even a good aggro strategist when I'm playing. <laughs> yeah. uh, math is for blockers, and uh, you know <laughs> that's up to you because i'm not blocking and i'll just keep attacking <laughs> uh but but there are people that do that and i mean you know i've got i've got another content creator that i'm friends with that he, he'll play it man yeah he'll play it and he'll make mythic every season and he'll learn the the ins and outs of whatever new deck he's playing and it doesn't matter if it's mono white or boros and yeah. um look I love the guy. I love talking to him, man. Is it's, this Cairo? It's, I, I, yeah, it is, man. I shout out to Cairo. Out, so. Shout there out to go, Cairo, man. man. Go hang Boy. out with Cairo MTG. He's a great dude. Yeah. So if you want to see, and I, he won't net deck either. I mean, he he'll get the highest percentage one, and he'll he'll flex. Yeah. But he'll play it for a long time before he starts flexing cards, man, because he'll learn the ins and outs. If you guys ever want to see what it takes to learn to grind the ladder every yeah. season with the highest percentage deck, um, he's it, man. He's part monster, DNA tested, online doctor approved. <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's there for a reason. Um, I honestly think net decking's almost a dead statement anymore because, like you said, as many people have access to the internet, none of us are making decks that probably haven't been made yeah. anymore. Yeah. And um, I think we're, I, I, I think we got to come to a point where we almost discuss about still the 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 meta being still statement being dead yeah. guys i think it's just i think it's an evolution of magic yeah. i honestly do uh i think it's you've got so many eyes on it now you're going to see the strongest decks a lot quicker yeah. every season every time a rotation happens and you either gotta put up with it <laughs> if you don't like it join it or find another format or find another way to have a lot of fun with this game because it's there. Yeah. Fun's there. The fun's oh, yeah. there if that's what you're wanting to have. But if you want to be the competitor, then yeah, take it for real and uh, put, put your 
put your head down and start yeah. grinding away. One thing I would suggest for anybody that does get frustrated with net decking, just play draft a lot more or any kind of limited format because you yeah. you you can net deck quote unquote in the situation of like, okay, I know for this strategy these cards are good, but there's mm -hmm. such a luck element to it that you you're never gonna build the same draft deck. And so like you'll you'll find a way to have fun with sealed or draft or any kind of limited capacity format because you're not ever going to get what you want all the time. And when you do, it'll feel really good. Um, it's That's a format onto itself, though. That's like a whole other thing. You can't, obviously, yeah, I mean, there's no right deck, quote unquote, in limited. But if you're annoyed by net decking in any capacity, go to a format where you literally can't net deck. Like, that's cool. You, you have that ability. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can't net deck drafts. Drafts got percentages. What cards have the higher percentage of yeah, for sure. functioning within your color scheme once you nail it down? I'm horrible at drafting, man. I no, love it, uh, it, but I'm horrible at it. Um, no, I mean, I, what I mean, horrible. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> if I win a game, I'm like, damn, I'm on Maybe fire. Maybe we should draft on stream one day. <laughs> Jesus, like the two of us jump don't. on a draft. That'd be fun. <laughs> let's don't. <laughs> I like draft. I like cube draft, though. I, I have a cube that I've actually dismantled it for the time being because I'm going through and mm -hmm. selling off a lot of my stuff. But um, I did have like a, a near as makes no difference legacy cube. Um, aside from not having the all the original dual lands, I've only got like two or three. Um, mm -hmm. And so I I had very close to a full legacy cube that I had in paper. And oh, my God gosh is that a fun format i've never done a cube draft man. oh my god john i guess we're i guess we're talking about a new thing we get together soon. which will have to happen like we will have to get yeah, you know in person absolutely um, yeah yeah at some point it should be known john and i have never seen each other in person this is an entirely yeah. internet focused relationship i'm okay with that caitlin's accepted it it's all good um <laughs> yeah. no but uh we <laughs> That was good. My, my wife's like, <laughs> tell your other wife I said hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she She's like, so how's John? And I'm like, we're good. Um, no, but uh, please, guys, like, just explore different aspects of magic. If you're getting frustrated with something, trust me, you are not the only one. I have been there. But don't, don't claim yeah. it's net decking. Claim, like, okay, it's not the format for me. And that's okay. Yeah, just yeah, try man. something different. There's yeah, like a I've, million things. There is. I've seen other people just down on it, and it just, man, you just gotta. There's, there's so many ways to have fun with it. Uh, just like you said, Kevin, it's just find it, find it. Uh, the net decking's real. The net decking's always gonna be real. Is it a bad thing? No, it's not, guys. It's just people wanting to play to their, you know, the highest potential with the percentage. Yeah. Now, whether they can play to that potential or not is completely different thing because you actually have to know the ins and outs of it and the piloting skills so mm -hmm. i don't mind running into it on the ladder man it's frustrating just because you know i get butt hurt and i like to win <laughs> but uh other than that um it doesn't i really think it's just i think we're at a i think we're at a point where the arena's evolved net decking is going to be just life now because yep. you've got interactive plugins that monitor the highest percentage win rates and yeah. uh and it, arena is making it evolve to the strongest state that it could be so mm -hmm. should we be upset with that i don't think or so. maybe you want to go to non-ranked and make some jank yeah so there you go that's right. my take we did it yeah we did that decking <laughs> there you go man. it was we're amazing <laughs> yeah um yeah, I, in summary, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think net decking is bad. Um, mm. But yeah, we could have probably saved an hour and just been like, net decking isn't that big a deal. But I like the fact that we got into some deep dive discussion on that because there's a lot there. There really is. Yeah, man, there it, it is. Uh, access of information and arena and COVID driving everybody to it. Yeah. Um, because our stores were shut and stuff. Yeah. Um, Man, it was just, I, I think it was a, I think there was a lot of pieces that were part of the catalyst. Yeah. Um, 
to uh to making the meta what it is now but uh i don't think it's so much a net decking um argument anymore as it is uh all eyes are on and you're gonna have a whole lot more brain power trying to put together the strongest meta possible and that's just what we got to accept yep couldn't agree more um well, guys, I do want to say, if you want to watch net decking, uh, we have new videos up every single day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a different style. That was a man. good segue, you're, though. You're, I liked that. Yes, it was. It's great. But yeah, guys, definitely go check it out because he verifies the deck. Yeah. That's what he's doing. He's putting a, he's putting a, a, a verification to it. You may see him go three losses in a row, three wins in a row, any type of combination you want to throw in there. Yeah. Um, I really like it, man. Well, it's not a verification. I guess it's a validation. A validation. Yeah, it's, it's just a, a testing word. of whatever is there. And I think that's I like it. It's fun. Um like but it. if you do want to play some some fun games, more casual games, if you're not a fan of net decking and you've got something of your own, then go to the live stream and go hang out with John and play him. We basically have an avenue for either one of those kinds of people. So welcome. This yeah. is the It Resolves community. We're the best. Um, <laughs> We're getting there, buddy. We're getting there. I'm on a roll, man, with these stupid statements. That's all right. Keep um, going. Keep going, dude. No, we we would love to have people join us, man. The community is yeah. great. Look, the, the It Resolves community as a whole is just amazing. And if you come to the stream, you'll see us calling at the country club. It is the same community. It's one community. We just, our club, our community has a club name. And, uh, <laughs> great group of people to hang out with man great group of people they're so fun dude yeah. so if you're brand new to magic and you're uh you feel a little timid or intimidated by it uh come on yeah come on no no questions a stupid question man no. uh we're trying to keep it as close to tabletop as we can with uh monitors and uh, online arena <laughs> so yes absolutely that's where it's at. uh we're here to have fun guys and so we really do appreciate any and all support especially as this has been a big change, like incorporating, John, your streaming side of things into the It Resolves community. We're fortunate to have that. Um, and, you know, between that and the recorded content that we've got, we've really been pushing a lot in multiple directions aside from just the one that we were doing previously. So um, thank you to everybody who has been supportive of all that, because I think as a whole, this is all to better the community. And so I, my hope is that that comes across as a, a step in the right direction for everybody. I hope it's more opportunity for you guys to interact with both of us and hang out with both of us, uh, as well as other really like-minded individuals who are just here to have some fun and play some magic. So uh, we do appreciate any support, all support, uh, support on the podcast. It's been amazing as well. So thank you guys there. Um, with that, we come to the end of the podcast, which is where we traditionally get to talk about things either either related to magic or not related to magic. I think it's been kind of 50-50 at this point, but uh, do you have any any fun stories to tell this week? Man, <laughs> one that I don't really want to tell. They're really oh. short, man. Do you want me to just tell them both? Sure. Okay, so I went to take out the trash yesterday yeah. to wheel it down to the curb for the garbage disposal. Yeah, snakes are out now. Oh. <laughs> so oh no. I, I grew up country, bro. And it's the one animal I don't do. Can't do it, man. My what? dad would catch them. Yeah. And just walk right up into the yard with them and be like, hey, no, no. I man. don't mind snakes. No, man. I mean, depends nope. on the snake. If it's like around here, we obviously have copperheads and copperheads you don't want to mess with uh, yeah no no absolutely not we've got we've got some rattlesnakes and uh every once in a while we'll get a water moccasin that yeah. pushes through from uh missouri but uh no nah, man uh, it was giant it was a giant mm -hmm. uh grass snake it was about that big <laughs> oh. <laughs> My wife came over and started laughing. She's like, are you sure it's not a worm? Dude, no, it's not a worm. I know what a snake looks like. Well, that's a really small snake. You're yeah. lucky your dad's not here. It's like, I don't care, man. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. so funny Other, that you're afraid of snakes. I'm petrified, bro. Petrified, man. I can't even go. I can't even go into the herpetarium in the zoo. Yeah. And mm -mm. no, nope. that's crazy. I nope. hate spiders as much as you must hate <laughs> snakes because I really don't like spiders. Well, we were duck hunting one season when I was real young, mm -hmm. and I don't do that anymore, um, but <laughs> probably because of this story. So <laughs> this will be the only story I tell then. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Save the other one for next week. <laughs> yeah. 
my dad was walking in front of me. We were going to, uh, we've got two south ponds on the farm and we've got one north pond and the yeah. two south ponds are down by the cabin. And uh, we were going to one of the south ponds and uh, it, this one has a, a really steep embankment yeah. that he had bulldozed up to it. And uh, he was walking probably about five paces in front of me and it was, I want to say, I want to say November. Okay. Without getting us in trouble for when we were hunting. It was on our private property anyway. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he stepped over it and didn't know it. And speaking of water moccasins. Yeah. And I don't know if it had just started to try and find its way to hibernate or whatever, but it was real slow. And I had stepped up, man. I was like 10 years old. And this thing struck out of the ground. Oh, no. And I mean, I got a close-up Discovery Channel view <laughs> of this thing's mouth coming yeah. at my face. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I, well, don't worry, I jumped. It didn't yeah, hit yeah. me. <laughs> it didn't hit me, well, bro. By good. the time, by the time that snake landed back to the ground, my my shotgun had hit the ground first, and I was probably a half a mile back to the house yeah, yeah. <laughs> from running. Bro. I yeah. That's yeah, terrifying. I was gone, dude. I was gone. I was gone. Look, I never even liked snakes before that, but that just solidified it. Screw them. I get nope. you. I don't. I really don't mind them. I this won't be my story. I'll keep this brief. But um, I was in scouts growing up. I'm an Eagle Scout, and so I went through that whole process. And one of the things that we did was a 50 mile hike, like backpacking hike, Ooh. Uh, on the foothills trail, um, which was really fun. I I love hiking. It's very therapeutic for me. Uh, it's just a nice time. Um, but I was with a larger group, but I'm a relatively fast hiker. I'm not like, I'm not saying I'm a really good hiker by any means, but I am a little bit faster than in this case, the rest of the group, aside from one other person. And so this other person and I, and I, I don't recall his name. I wouldn't say it anyway, but I genuinely don't remember it. Uh, he and I were ahead of everybody and walking relatively fast, just chatting as we were going. Well, we ended up going off the trail. Long story short, we ended up having to get back to the right place because we we just took the wrong trail. It's not that we were off of a trail. It was that we just took the wrong path. Um, however, about a mile down that path, we step or, or I'm in front. I step and then he's like, oh, shit, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he's like, back up. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, just back up, back up, back up. So I looked down. I had just stepped over a rattlesnake and didn't know it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, shit. I like that was dangerous. That was really bad. I don't know why I did that. Um, and so we ended up like grabbing a, a giant branch that had fallen down recently. And so we were able to pick that up and like kind of throw it down the the hillside on the one side of the trail and so we were we kind of got it out of dodge without getting in trouble or getting bit or anything and then ended up having to walk a mile back when we figured out we were on the wrong path but uh, no um, bro no <laughs> i mean i didn't like that but you, it didn't you, bother me either you kept calmer than i did man yeah. so we were at wyoming devil's tower as a family trip one summer and yeah. i got off on the wrong trail and you don't think that that's possible until you go to it. The trail's yeah. not, I don't know how it is now, but it wasn't laid in concrete or anything. It was just a walking path. Yeah. And they tell you that there's rattlesnakes and stuff. And I walked off by myself somehow, man. And I started hearing the whole, it sounds, if you've never heard one and they're really big yeah. or it sounds like a busted hot water pipe. It sounds just like a, yeah. shh, you know, and uh, I started hearing it and I was like, Dude, I did the weirdest bunny hop horse gallop <laughs> run out of there I've ever done in my life. I, I know that. it. I mean, I was probably 13 or 14. I didn't care if it looked cool. I just knew I wasn't getting bit by a snake, man. Yeah, and I was touching important. the ground as as fairly as as little as possible <laughs> on my way out. So, I love that. <laughs> that's it. That's it, man. That's all I got, bro. Such I got new a million information. more horror snor stories Such with new snakes. information <laughs> that you're afraid of snakes. We're going to have to play a prank somehow. Um, Let's don't. I think we it might, would be though. The heart attack. It would be the heart attack. I think we might, though. Um, I'll say this. My story is relatively short. Uh, I And I don't know that you and I have talked about this, but I loved playing disc golf a lot. We did. 
Okay, I, I thought we might have, but I wasn't sure. I know I've said it to the It Resolves community, but I really do love playing disc golf. Uh, it's an absolute blast. Um, Caitlin and I go play. A lot of my family will play, even though none of us are very good, but my family's really not good. Um, and it's <laughs> really entertaining to watch. Um, but we do have a blast uh, uh, playing. And for those of you who might have played disc golf before, I'm going to throw a name out there of a pro player called Simon Lizotte, who I believe is German. Uh, but um, is a very, very good player, does a lot of trick shots and that kind of stuff. But he posted a vlog the other day of the most beautiful course I have ever seen. It's in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think it was like an hour north of Harrisburg. I don't remember the name of the course. I'd have to go back and look. But I watched his video on it because it was stunning. It was a beautiful place. And this is a terrible story, but basically the end of the story is I just want to play at that that disc golf place because <laughs> it was stunning. Um and that's it. That's the whole story. That's all I I have to say. Right on, man. Right on. I mean, at least you didn't say that. And now the park's not there anymore. Yeah. Oh, also, yeah, and I'm no. scared of discs and leaves yeah, and all this right. stuff. Um, <laughs> Just snakes, bro. Just snakes. That's so funny. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy that. Um, no. Anyway, uh, guys. <laughs> That is our episode for today. This has been an absolute blast of a topic. We really did get to dive into some other stuff that I wasn't necessarily expecting we would. I kind of liked going yeah. in line to this one. So this was really fun. I do want to encourage everybody to share your thoughts on net decking. I know there are probably some relatively strong opinions on this. So if you do share your opinion, just be conscious that other people might be uh, of a different opinion than you. And that is okay. Um, we're here to share our ideas. It's not meant to be like a, you get criticized for your ideas. So feel free, feel comfortable sharing your opinion. Just please be conscious that you're not um, really putting anybody else down because I think this is a topic where you could easily get there. Uh, so let's just avoid that. Let's have a, a positive discussion. But uh, yeah, this was a great episode, guys. This was episode five. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, do make sure you subscribe here on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast app or Spotify, thank you so much. Feel free to follow us there uh, so you get notified about all upcoming episodes. This has been a blast, guys. Uh, John, thank you so much, man. Great topic. And uh, yeah. we'll talk to you guys later. You get to see bloopers now. So we're going to put those in. <laughs> Have a glorious day, guys. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> My bad. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs>